All right, praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me. We're going to be going through a great study today. Uh, the series that we're on is called Biblical Truth That the Main Street Church Will Not Tell You. And the Main Street Church is 99 plus plus percent of all the churches on Main Street and on the back roads in a city, county, or country near you. I've been to dozens of them in this country and also overseas, and it's the same rotten filth that spewed from most every pulpit. Name it and claim it. False signs and wonders. False healing. Uh, false tongues. Uh, prosperity gospel. Jesus loves everybody, etc., etc. You're saved in sin, not from sin. So we're setting the record straight. One of the biggest problems and one of the um, uh, biggest lies that the devil is told is about modesty. And um, every single church that I've been to was so incredibly immodest. It's not funny. You can see this on social media. You can see this just by uh, driving past a church and people coming out of it. You cannot tell the difference between those people and the people walking down Main Street. So modesty in the church is going to send most all of you to hell. And I'm going to prove it here. Now, of course, I'm speaking predominantly to women today, but also men, you need to cover up. You can't go out with a muscle shirt, a tank top, or your shirt off out in public. Amen? Um, you can't uh, try to look attractive for women. Amen? It should be plain, very simple. Cover yourself up, people. I don't care how warm it is, how hot it is. We have Hindus. Uh, we do missions all over the world. And, and let's say India and Bangladesh, etc. Uh, they have uh, Hindus that cover themselves from head all the way down to their ankles. So these people, and, and this is in 115 degree weather sometimes out of the year. They are Muslims, Hindus, etc. Honor their God more than you honor Jesus Christ. You look like the world, you talk like the world, your conversation is about the world. So stay with me. Let's get right into it. Praise the Lord. Number one, uh, gospel order and purity requires neatness and cleanliness. Let's see, Matthew 6, 17 through 18. But thou, when thou fast, anoint thy head and wash thy face. Again, to appear, appear presentable, not attractive, amen, but presentable. That you take care of yourself. God gave you this body and if the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you don't walk around with food on your face and, and a sloppy shirt, etc., etc. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which sees in secret shall we reward thee openly. Praise the Lord. And then 1 Thessalonians 4, 7 goes along with this too. For God has not called us to uncleanness but unto holiness. Praise Lord. Very simple command. Don't walk around with ripped shirts, ripped pants, and all this other stuff. Amen? Okay. Brothers and sisters must wear modest apparel, which covers and conceals the body. Sisters are commanded to wear a double-layered garment. Everybody's going to be going, ah! Well, we have a very long study about this, which I'm not going to get into now. But... Cosimos catastoli is the words we're going to go through. Modest apparel. Cosimos catastoli is a garment that has a bottom layer and then a top layer over it like a vest. You can argue with the um, with the scripture later. You can argue with God in your own time. Let's get through the study. 1 Timothy 2.9 In like manner also that woman adorn themselves in modest apparel. Again, Cosmios Catastole. It's very important. I'm not going to go through that much of what the word, uh, those two words mean, but I will in a second. With shamefacedness, that means bashfulness. Okay, that is towards men, ladies. Modesty towards God and others. Amen. Reverence. And sobriety, that means sanity and self control. Not with broided hair. What is broided hair? It means it's curled or it's permed or it's done up to look fancy. Uh-uh. God does not want to have any of that. Or gold. Not with pearls. That means jewels of any kind that are ornamental. Am I going to get a gold wedding ring or do I get a simple $8 or $9, $10 wedding ring like I did on Amazon when I got married and gave the rest to the poor? you got to think about these things. It says not to wear gold or pearls 
or a costly array, which is expensive clothing. But, verse 10 of 1 Timothy 2 uh, says, which becometh prof woman professing godliness with good works. I'm going to read it one more time. And like without my notes. And likewise manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness, modesty, and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but with be which becometh woman professing godliness with good works. Very simple. Um, the uh, Cosmios Catastoli was a long piece of cloth doubled in the middle so you don't show the curves ladies I see some people man you they're covered but they're skin tight it's amazing men lusting oh you look beautiful look at these professing Christian men my god you're both going to hell there's a long piece of clothing double in the middle sewed up on both sides of course leaving room only for the arms at the top piece was cut out for the head um, and, the, and of course a slit for the head to be passed through amen it hung down to the feet both before in front and in back and was girded with the zona around the body just under uh, the breasts okay so the word catastole refers to the part of the Roman and Greek and uh, Grecian dress we can learn can we learn from this yes the catastole seems to have been a vest even another covering over that to make sure it was modest. Oh, that was 2,000 years. Man, you guys don't understand. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can, can I murder? It says do not murder in here. That was a couple thousand years ago, right? 6,000, even longer than that, right? Thousands of years ago, it says do not murder. Can I do that? No, what the Bible says we have to do now, we have to be separate. Now, continue with me. Clothing and per personal appearance shall maintain distinction between the sexes. This is an easy one. Let's go to Revelation, um, excuse me, Deuteronomy 22.5. The woman shall not wear which pertaineth unto a man. Neither a man shall put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination to the Lord thy God. I see it all the time. Woman walking into church wearing what pertains to a man. Okay? Modesty without question should be your exception. You must abound in everything, including modesty. You know, you people think you're just going to, you know, like somebody slides into a base plane, um, a, you know, a sport or a baseball. Or, you know, you, you're just going to slide in there. Yeah, I just made it. Oh, no, 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 no. If you're not growing every single day and more grace and wanting less of the world and more of Jesus, you're going straight to hell. Sin must stop at conversion. You don't sin less. You become sin less. Amen. Modesty without question should be your exception. Second Corinthians 8, 7. Listen, therefore, abound in everything. Do everything for Jesus to excess. You can't be too holy as long as your true, heart's true with God. Now, you can be a false Christian dressed from the head, you know, your, the top of your neck to the bottom of your feet and still have a heart that's wicked and you're wicked. But it says right here, 2 Corinthians 8, 7, Therefore, as you abound in everything, in faith and utterance, which means instruction to others and witnessing and knowledge, and in all diligence and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. You have to do over and above. Amen? Listen to this warning. I want you to listen to this closely. 1 Peter 4.18 says, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, if the ones that are living right scarcely get saved, at the end when they take their last breath, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? And that one verse there, among many others, kills the, kills the thought that a sinner goes to heaven. If the righteous scarcely get into heaven, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? Where does the unmodest dressing woman appear? 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Know you not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. That includes metrosexual. A lot of men wear these metrosexual clothes, the skinny jeans and the tight shirts and the slick back hair, all this stuff. Nor abuses all this perfume of the men and women. Man, what are you, you putting perfume to attract other people? It's amazing. Nor abuses of themselves with mankind. That's homosexuals. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor excoriators extortion shall inherit the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. So we have to understand people that 
These are warnings that are in the Bible. Let's go. Notice how God clothes the body. Pay very close attention. This is how God has shown us how he clothes the body. Mark 16, 5 and 6. And entering into the sepulcher, the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrightened. And he saith unto them, Be not affrightened. Ye see Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they had laid him. A long white garment. Not short shorts or anything like that. Amen. Revelation 1.13. Listen closely. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. Again, down to the foot. You hear this over and over again? Modesty without question should be our uh, representation on the earth. Amen? It's got to be without question. Are you truly separate, set apart, or do you look like the world? Amen? Now, if you look like the world, be sure that you are offending people on purpose. You are attracting. You have makeup on. We're going to get into that in a minute. Make you, Do you make up your eyes and your face and everything to make yourself look more attractive to the world so men can lust over you more? Man, you're wicked. You wear fancy clothes with fancy patterns, so you look at, oh, you look great today, they'd say to you at work, or as you go into the store. Man, that's nasty. Matthew 18, 6 says, But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better that you put a millstone around your neck and go throw yourselves in the depths of the sea. That's what the Bible says about you if you're not wearing modest clothing and your con whole conversation is modest. Praise the Lord. Clothing shall exemplify gospel simplicity and be free of all evidence of pride, display, flashiness, or adornment, attractiveness. Amen? Second Corinthians 1.12 says, For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience that is simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God. We have had our conversation, which means not just the words, the way we conduct ourselves, and that includes what you wear, how you speak, how you act, what your spirit's like to have our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you, Ward. Amen? 1 Peter 3, 3 through 4. Listen closely. Who's adorning? Let it not be outward adorning of the fixing and planting of hair and wearing of gold or putting on of fancy and modest and worldly apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, praise the Lord, which is in the sight of God of great price. These things here that are being expressed in this verse forbid the curling of the hair, permanence, etc., right? Wearing gold by way of ornaments, of course. Putting, you know, a, a very simple wedding ring is no problem. But it says no gold, right? That doesn't mean silver either, amen? It's just something real cheap. Praise the Lord, we have 21,000 children dying every day. Pay $10, it looks just as good. You can't tell the difference. It's between you, your wife, and God, nobody else. Do we need diamonds? Come on, people! These therefore ought to never be allowed less defended by Christians. You guys got to wake up. Are you attracting the world with your makeup, fancy clothes, made up hair, etc.? Now again, that doesn't mean you don't comb your hair, ladies, in the morning. But you're spending all this money to color it, to put on all that makeup, to wear these fancy clothes and all the gold and everything else. You're going to go straight to hell. First, listen, 1 John 2.16 for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not in the Father, but is of the world. And this is where the, the, uh, these, the women have to listen. Men are incredibly lustful. A little bit of makeup, nice hair, you know, fancy hair, uh, jewelry hanging, this and that. Just doesn't have enough to be skin tight clothes. The skirt just has to be up a little bit, you know, going up the calves a little bit. And, and, and the men, boom, 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 fires them off. Now, they're going to hell too. But if you help them there, better to put a millstone around your neck. Can you do too much for the Lord? Can you do too much not to stumble somebody else in this world? 
Well, that's not, no, that's what the Bible says. The Bible forbids the wearing of gold, pearls, or costly array. Now listen, notice the attire of the Babylonian harlot, Revelation 17, 4. Listen, that's what the Bible says. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, fancy clothes, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. And that's another thing. Shouldn't wear all these fancy colors? It's right here, purple and scarlet. It's telling us how the Babylonian, Babylonian harlot dressed should be plain, plain, simple, straight colors, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Do you hear this? Look at how the rich man was dressed. Look at his apparel, Luke 16, 9. There was a certain rich man. He was clothed in purple and fine linen, attractive and fancy clothes and fared sumptuously. That means he feasted and lived a splendid life, had no lack of anything. Never content, right? And it says every day. The Bible forbids following the changing fashions of the world. I hear so many times, but I'll look like an Amish person or a Mennonite. Or exactly. The Bible tells you what you are to wear. You're not to go with the culture, which is cultish, and of what everybody else is wearing, you ought to be separate, peculiar. You'll be hated by everybody for his name's sake. Not just for your belief here, but also for the way you dress. Your whole conversation with God should be different than the world. The problem is most of you are sitting in those false churches and you look just like the world. You're cowards. You're afraid to truly come to Jesus. You're afraid what your family will say, what your neighbor will say. Oh, look at them. They're really Jesus freaks. You better stop becoming a Jesus freak. The Bible forbids following the changing fashions of the world. Listen, it's very simple. Romans 12, 1 through 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy acceptable to neighbor no acceptable to your friends no acceptable to god which is your reasonable service listen verse 2 of romans 12 and be not conformed to this world be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of god you mean I have to? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.22, Abstain from all appearance of evil. Titus 2.11-15, through 15, listen. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness, that includes immodesty, and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing, glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave, themselves, him, uh, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good words, uh, works and words. These things speak, there's the words, and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Praise the Lord. Let no man despise you. No matter what you wear for Jesus, ladies, you're going to have to cover your head. It's commanded. Hold on. 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16. As obedient children, listen, not fashioning yourselves to your former lusts. All that stuff is gone. You're a new man or a new woman. But as he which has called you is holy, so you need to be holy in all manner of conversation. That means how you talk, walk, dress, you know, hold yourself in, in, in society. All manner of conversation because it is written, Be ye holy for I am holy. Brothers are to be free from the sin and the shame of long hair. Sisters are to have long hair that is covered with a distinctive head covering as commanded by the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to go to the Bible. We have a great study on this and read it. Amen. I'll post it down below. 1 Corinthians eleven six, and then verse 14 and 15. For if a woman be not covered, and that word means veil. That means unveiled. It should say, for if a woman be not uh, veiled, let her also be shorn, shaven. And if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be 
veiled, covered. Got to go back to the Greek. You're going to hate this. But at all times, a woman's in public. She needs to be covered. Praise the Lord. Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Are you shameful men? You have long hair, flowing hair, looking like a woman? But if a woman have long hair, it is to a glory for her, for her hair is given for her covering. Now, covered, which I talked about in verse 6, means katalupto, from the Greek, to cover holy, that is to veil. It's not just the hair, ladies, that's a covering. You can go kicking and screaming. God commands you to live holy. Is there a good reason, and I'm going to finish here, why makeup should be used in light of all the scriptures that we went through? How is it necessary or edifying unless you have carnal values that twist your definition of necessary and edifying? Listen, Titus 2.5 says, To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to the husbands, that the word of God not be blasphemed. What promotes being discreet and chaste? Listen very closely. Does not make up do the very opposite? Of course it does. You're not discreet and chaste. You're not obeying Jesus Christ. He's not your friend. John 15, 14 says, you are my friends if you obey my commandments. John 14, 15, if you love me, obey my commandments. You don't love Jesus if you're caking on makeup. No. To make yourself more attractive to the world. Man, it's unbelievable. Jezebel knew what makeup was. And listen, don't forget, talking about somebody's mother here. So when we call out people, doesn't matter if you're a mother or a daughter or a sister or a brother or anybody else, we call out everybody as the Lord tells us to. Amen. Second Kings 9.22, and it came to pass when Joram saw, Je Joram saw Jehu, that he said, is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, what peace? So as long as the whoredoms of your mother, call the right out, the whoredoms of your mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. And verse 30 of 2 Kings 9 says, And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. What did Jezebel try to do to get out of this mess? Make herself more attractive. How? And she painted her face, the Bible said, put on makeup, and tied her head, fancied up her hair, and looked out the window. Man, so many of you are going to go to hell and be with Jezebel because you're immodest. I don't care what you say. You can go kicking and screaming. All these verses are truth. They're from the Bible. Click on our links below about modesty. You have one, a lot of teachings about modesty. Hours of uh, 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 audio and scripture. Okay? Look at it. Last Bible verse I'm going to give you. I can continue to go on and on. But I'm not going to go through it. I want to keep this one short because this is a short video series. No one in the Bible ever looked like the whore Jezebel with makeup. No one. No holy person. First John 5, 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Don't go kicking and screaming. The Bible says, for rebellion is of the sin of witchcraft. To all those that are living holy, that are not wearing all this gold and silver and all this other jewelry and pearls and everything else, that really have crucified their flesh, have died to Christ, and have come up as a new man or a new woman, God bless you. I pray for you. Keep pressing on. You'll be hated more and more each day. And as you can see, just by looking online at the news for one minute a day, you can see how wicked and wicked and wicked this world is getting. Don't worry. Even if they have a butter knife to your head, proclaim Jesus. Amen. And for all those that are sitting in these false churches, I care about you. I truly do. That's why I spend this time studying and exhorting you. Please come out of these this heresy. And I know a lot of you out there, if you've gotten to the end of this, are kicking and screaming, he's crazy, it doesn't say this, it doesn't say covering, it doesn't say makeup, it doesn't... Go to God. You're not arguing with me, you're arguing with Scripture. Man, you don't understand how holy you have to be to get into heaven. God is not a magic man. He's a God of all creation and His love is conditional. Alright, until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord and you must obey Him.